Today, the Candles Holocaust Museum in Terre Haute opened its doors for the first time since Eva Kors passing last week. Community members from all over were there to remember Eva and the legacy she leaves behind. Abigail Degler has a story. Mike, although I never had the chance to meet Eva, those who did say she was a light placed here to teach us from her life story. Those reflecting on time spent with Eva knew her as a woman who did not want to dwell in the past, but to learn from it and learn to forgive along the way. Eva created Candles Holocaust Museum in Terre Haute as an education center and as a platform to spread her message of peace to the world. She was here to uh, make the world a better place and just to shine a light on, on her story. Eva impacted the lives of so many. She just enjoyed the moment. She woke up every day and said, what is my purpose? How can I make the world a better place? Leah Simpson, executive director of Candles Museum and friend of Eva's, says her passing just doesn't feel real. And just the way she says, this is my quest, the way she sings it, like I can hear her. And I'm smiling because I can hear her singing that and just being so alive and happy in that moment. Every year, Eva would take a trip back to Auschwitz with a group of people to tell her story of survival and to educate them on the history of the extermination camp. Kate Grabowski remembers one of the emotional speeches Eva made when she took the trip to Poland. Hearing her tell her a story, I could really just feel how, like, even throughout the years, like, this is still part of her. And um, there are people in the crowd um, were crying because it was very emotional. But she looked at them and said, I don't want you to cry right now, not in Auschwitz. I beat this place, and I want you to be happy that I beat this place. Because if we cry here, then that means that they won and I lost. But that's, it's the other way around. I won, I beat Auschwitz. This was just one memory Eva gave Grabowski. In her time at Candles, she learned a lot from Eva that she says she will always keep with her. Both Simpson and Grabowski grew close to Eva in her time here and are now left to reflect on the memories they shared with her. I think if I had to pick something that she has taught me, it would be just to never give up. She, I mean, at the age of 85, I mean, here she was still doing what she loved. I don't think she would want it any other way. Candles Museum's program coordinator, Marcus Steiner, confirms starting next week, the museum will have a normal business, hours, and displays for the community. All right, thank you, Abigail. Eva Kors service arrangements have been announced. Visitation will take place this Saturday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Devon Funeral Home in Spring Hill, on Spring Hill. The funeral will take place on Sunday. Due to limited seating, Kors family encourages the public to attend one of the two memorial services in lieu of the funeral. The first public memorial service will take place on August 4th at 2 p.m. at Indiana State University's Tilson Music Hall. There will be another public memorial service at Butler State University in Indianapolis on uh, August 18th at 2 p.m.